Hey guys, still here and welcome to another ranked replay. Why a replay? Well, I have been uh, avoiding ranked for a couple of days, maybe up to a week or so. I was very much training up for the 2v2 tournament, which uh, Greyhound, Blitzwar and myself were thrown out of. That I um, not mean we were dismissed, but we were defeated. Um, I was trying to really work up towards the, the challenge. And then I thought, no, I'm not playing this game for fun anymore. I'm just playing it to grind. I need to take a breath. I need to distance myself from Wargame for at least a little bit. So I did. And then I decided, you know what? It's been about a week. How about another game of Ranked? Let's have a go. And I got this Highway to Seoul. It's against a Lieutenant Colonel, and that is a higher rank than I currently am. I'm trying to get back to Lieutenant Colonel. It's not proving to be easy. So, in order to try and get back, I have decided to use my Eurocore Moto. You've seen these guys before. Uh, they're really quite potent, and, well, I suppose that goes for most decks. It's just that I am not a great player when it comes to a lot of different decks. I can play EC Moto okay. I can play Baltic Moto pretty well. When it comes to mechanized decks, I have a lot to learn. And I'm not sure if I have the patience uh, or the willingness to learn. What I'm facing today is, I believe, an Eastern Block. We have an opening with a Salamandra and a drop-off, which is most likely LSTR. He's also starting with an Osa AKM and two uh, AG, not AGGM, two uh, machine gun trucks. We have a couple of uh, mechanized vehicles coming up, Vidra 2s. There's a CV coming in as well. Of course, you could have a second one. Then a heavier punching power with the T-72S. Spotting for that is the SPW-40. Some infantry and a mortar. And there's another Snetchka in the back. His CV is hiding on the edge of the spawn zone. And we have one guy moving on to the side. It's just a reservist. It's not going to be particularly spe uh, special. It's just there to make sure I don't flank anything into his base. Didn't have any plans on it today, but, you know, it's a good practice to have some defenses. My plan? Have the Puma Pirate go over to Charlie, drop off my reconnaissance unit there, walk it over and potentially intercept some guys as they're moving into Charlie. Of course, this tree line would make for an ideal ambush position. Take control of the building here. Make sure that I have the buildings here covered with ATGMs. So this is HEGM territory, this is Legionnaire for shorter range and also more effectiveness against infantry. And back the whole bunch up with fire support. The fire support is the M201 106mm recoilless rifle jeep. The column that I have right now consists of six of these, then more punching power from the AMX 10R CSBs, 16 AP, then reconnaissance in the AMX 10RC with only 12 AP. HEGMs, I decided to go big and heavy with two HEGM Milan F3s. Because it's not unusual that you have a big clash here, and I want it to be ready. Then we have the uh, aforementioned Legionnaires coming up. The whole column is protected by one Crotal, and I got a CV going there. In the meanwhile, towards the middle, Gazelle is scouting out ahead. We have my MX-10 RC, a VAP 2013 with, I believe, another HEGM. Hello, what are you carrying? Yeah, HEGM. VLRA with Commando Marines, um, not Commando Marines, the Reconnaissance Commandos, Commando Para, and uh, a Kotal there as well. So I'm covering quite a bit, making sure that he doesn't just sneak his units through. And the Commando Para have been dropped off. I can use the Pirate later if I so desire. Now interestingly, because I'm a motorized deck, I can get here on the left very quickly. Turns out he has almost nothing. And with the first couple of blows, I'm able to deliver quite some damage. Time to drop off the infantry here. The HEG Milan F3s have already taken a position. The Kotal is working on the MI-17 before it murders everything. Second shot misses. It does mean I don't have enough for the Salamandra. Sadly, I would have loved to have taken that thing down. But it does mean that I'm able to take down almost all of his forces here. And of course, with the magic of hindsight, this means I should have just kept pushing. One Vidra... One Reconnaissance Infantry and two Fagot HEGMs is not going to cut it. I could have driven right into his Bravo position and taken the CV out. The rest of his forces in the middle, T-72S that I saw at the spawn, and a couple of transports. He's uh, screening with reservists over there. MX-10RC are doing some damage against that. And I turned off the Milan F1 
which is not in cover, by the way, until such a time where something more interesting than a five point, sorry, ten point transport comes up. Now this is just a missed opportunity. I should really have kept going, but I'm more of a conservative player. I don't want to push too hard and find that I lose the entire force only to have very little in the sense of uh, fallback position. Now the HGM does, uh, does take out the transport and the T-72S is very interested in whatever the hell is coming down here. They have recon, Special Aufklarer and there's LSTR backing them up. This is anti-tank, anti-infantry-ish and anti-air. So it's a dangerous bunch and they have already taken out my reconnaissance uh, helicopter. I'm trying to deal damage against the T-72S. Not quite getting there, of course, because an HGM line of one is not going to cut it. You need more. And the T-72S with a sphere takes out my reconnaissance. I still have the Commander Para and I'm trying to keep those alive. The next sphere hits the Crotal. I'm trying to kill some of his recon as far as I can see them with the Milan. So I'm trying to kill off the SPW-40. And in the meanwhile, the Commander Para are also opening up with a machine gun. And uh, it's not a great position, but they are dealing some serious damage against the LSTR, which is a nice kill. I smoke up the position here. I'm not sure how much fire support he had in the trees. Turns out it was nothing. And my legionnaires rush forward with the enemy turned off. So that if they do encounter something, it's going to be fired at with the, the, the Eryx. Now here comes the 912. I do kind of expect where he's going to drop. Pushing the legionnaires out of the building. I'm not sure why he's not following up. It's not like he wants to clear the building and then move into it. Because this is not going to move in. This is potentially going to move in. Although not that likely. Over on the right, uh, we have played a nice switch around. I am essentially behind his lines. He's behind my lines. So, yeah. Recon units. Not really reconning each other that well. Bringing up more HGMs as well as another 10RC. And I've retasked the 201s to start wiping out the reserve schützen before they turn out to become a problem for the Milan. And I also want to send them against the LSTR and the Special Aufklarer over there. Now this was a nice shot here. The Legionnaire do take a lot of damage, but they wipe out the T-72S with a side shot from the Eryx. That was an expensive and important kill, because it means he does not have as, enough, uh, or as, uh, as much fire support here. I'm also pushing up on the left, and the Commander Para probably not too happy about that, as they do take some damage from both the Schnetzka and the Wilk. Aside from that, we're fine. Motor Schutzen trying to make a move on the Legionnaires. Legionnaires still not being properly microed. I don't have the Minimi on. So I'm trying to provide some fire support with the um, mortar that I have in the back. And the AMX 10 RCs are currently duking it out against the Wilk. I have more rate of fire. Um, he has more damage output. So we're kind of even. And in retrospect, I should have just closed the distance. And that way, finished off this unit, because this is going to escape as the Pram S deploys a smokescreen. Now over here, I can see that all of my reconnaissance, or all my uh, fire support is being detected. So I'm trying to get the AMX 10 rc into concealment, and I'm trying to look for whatever it is that's spotting me. I'm not sure which one it is at this point, but they do make the mistake of opening up. And that's what I wanted them to do, because I don't mind losing a 10-point transport in exchange for an LSTR. So, the LSTR are dead. That leaves him with just one reconnaissance unit. And uh, there's still a bit of reserve schützen as well as uh, the reconnaissance infantry coming up. Nothing too special. Another AGG Milan F1 moving up. I still got the F3s over there. The tenor Cs and the Kotal are being resupplied and repaired. And over on the right, we have something sneaking. Um, it is very low on fuel. And I think it was the one that dropped off the reserve schützen there. So it's it's really quite open, actually. This is his only base defense. My base defense is Flak Panzer M42A1. Uh, terrible autonomy, but good enough to defend the base with. Now, MX-10 RC is moving forward, trying to get the kill on the Wilk. Because I did see that the Wilk had a temporary optical issue. It couldn't spot me anymore. I get one more shot in, and that's when it disengages. But not far enough, and I take it down. But I do lose my uh, commander power over there. He loses the Snatchka, and I try to smoke up my MX-10 RCs to pull them back. At this point, he only has an LSTR, uh, and it's transport. It's not very special. 
So, bit of a standstill. And this is usually when I start beating myself up. I do that quite a lot in Ranked, and it's not very healthy. Every time that I play a motorized deck, I kind of have this thing going in my head like, you need to win fast. Because a motorized deck is fast. It needs to strike everywhere at the same time. Why are you not doing that? Why haven't you won already? It's not very beneficial. It's not very useful. Um, and this time around, I decided to just mostly ignore that. And start in f instead uh, barricading more of the highway so I can take more control of that. And not caring too much about Echo, but making sure that I have the Delta as well as the highway. So I can decide who and what gets into Charlie and Gulf. I know that there's still something spotting me. I'm trying to sneak up with the 10RC as well as the fire support. Whoever spots something first is perfectly fine to get killed. It's not ideal, but there's the target. They miss their first RPG and they pay for that dearly. They do hit the second. You can see he's desperately trying to smoke him up, but not enough. Problematic for me, however, is that there's another Wilk coming in and I don't really have an answer. I got the Legionnaires, yes. But the Legionnaires are never going to hit the Wilk, and the Wilk is too much of a threat for the MX-10 RC. I will get the first shot, but that's about it. Now over here, uh, we're partying around the sector of Echo. He has some units flanking. This is the transport from the LSTR. The LSTR are holding back. I'm trying to diversify my forces, so I'm using Command of Parrot Spot as well as keep the enemy at bay. I'm using a Mistral to make sure he doesn't uh, send in any more MI-17s, for example. Also, going to the right, I have Legionnaires and their transport. Because I'm suspecting that he might be building up more forces here, as I did lose the Commando Para back there. Now, more forces are coming up. The T-72 is engaging my VABs, which I had pushed forward to try and just spot something. And also potentially cut off any retreat from the recon infantry here. This was pretty dangerous, and I should have dropped these off. But they do make it out alive. And the 2013s are forcing the motor shoots out into, if they so desire, the other side where the other legionnaires are at. At this point, Chasseur, I'm thinking, okay, he saw me drop off forces. There's a fairly decent chance that he's going to bring out the MiG-29 12A again. So better be prepared for that. So I got a Kotal, I got a Mistral, I have a Roland over there, I got another Kotal, I have the Mistral over there. I usually don't use this much anti-air, but in this case, I'm quite happy that I did, because it turned out to be very valuable. Over here I was able to take out a vehicle with the Eryx and suppress some of the infantry, but overall nothing too special. There's still the Sun Render hovering low. I don't really have anything to kill that with. You could argue that maybe the VAP could do it. Um, the Legionnaires definitely could do it because it has no rocket pods left, but it's proving a bit difficult. Over here another HGM on the front line, HGM F3, trying to deal with the Wilk. It's a nice 90 point target, but it's not too easy to kill. He tries to go in with a rocket pod run with MiG-21 ML, and he gets the Kotal. He does pay for it, and uh, I think it's the combination of the Roland and the Mistral on the other side that do take it out. Wilk still trying to push. Chasseur, not ideally suited to deal with the Wilk. But hey, they're here, they might as well take a shot, and they do get some damage in. They fire every 6 minutes, 10 rounds a minute rate of fire, but I have two groups. And the Wilk is forced to retreat. He has no fire support here. And that's kind of what I was uh, not expecting. Not the, the bird, I mean, but in general. I wasn't really expecting him not to have fire support. But I decided to just go for it. And as the seed aircraft takes out my uh, Roland, I am just pushing the tank and using their own smoke screen against them. Although at this point, of course, they know that this, the infantry is coming because they still got that recon squad over there. Now, I have decided to push ACV into Delta, so I'm at a plus one. We still have a lot of time left. So, neither party is very much in a hurry to try and win this quickly. Quinn Para, out of the building. Not necessarily my best call. Because he's starting to punch, or he's starting to stack up forces here. We've got the Vidras, we've got the BMP-1 SP-1s, we've got motor shoots coming up. He's definitely prepping something here. Which, I think is, um, in his case, quite logical, because he has the resupply route here, and it's very short to get there. I'm trying to push back with the Gazelle Cannon, as well as the Pirate, but I was not expecting a Legionnaire. Oh, sorry, an LSTR. 
And of course the Alistair and the Snerchka take out Recon and then take out both Cassiopes. So the helicopter offensive completely failed. That means we're going to have to call in something else and I already have a Tiger on the way, which again, considering the NTR situation, is not great. But they should be able to survive. Again, retrospect. Because they only have one missile left. So unless they crit me, I should be fine. The Chasseur in the middle of the map have taken over the forest over here. I am once again retasking some of the vehicles that I had on the other side. And the Wilk has decided to retreat. It's no longer staying in the forest. The other side is also being snuck up with a couple of Chasseur. HGM Milans are moving up. I got another VLRA with Recon. And I got another Mistral coming up. Again, trying to bolster all sorts of units everywhere. I need HGMs. I need anti-air. I need standard infantry. I have a bit of coverage everywhere. And so far, it seems to be working. Because it's going to be very difficult for him to get into Delta. Especially with the Legionnaires over there. He might realize that too. And that's why he's going into Echo. Now, he's successfully taken out my uh, Commando Parrot. So only thing standing in his way here is one Vab and the Mistral. And he's pushing with the Vidras, the Motorschutzen. There's T-72s in the back awaiting orders. I'm trying to come back into that sector with 2013 with Legionnaires, MX-1390 and another HGM is going towards the highway. Here's the Wilk again. And I'm not sure exactly how the Wilk was shooting, I think, a transport. Yeah, a VLRA. A VLRA that is sent forward kind of as a sacrificial goat. Uh, well, <laughs> why is it sacrificial goat? As a, a sacrifice to try and have something scout out by force. I decided to deploy a Weasel Toe 2. I genuinely don't use these, because they're quite expensive. But this guy was starting to use more and more tanks, and with 70% accuracy and 25 AP, you can eliminate tanks pretty swiftly. My MX-10 or CSBs are pushing back the fire support, so the Motorschützen are still there, but they're not really happy about not having fire support. There goes one of the fire support units. I can, s I think I'm not able to see these guys because I don't have recon. And they can see me, okay. This was far too aggressive. Far too aggressive. And the 10 RCs do take a hit. There goes one. The other one narrowly avoids its death. Rocket pods from the Tiger dealing damage. The Alistair have one missile left still, so they cannot do that much. And meanwhile, the MiG-29 comes in again. Trying to deal with all the chasseurs. And uh, I think they're going to do just that. Because I'm moving the chasseur right into the bombing area. But even if they would have survived that, I don't think they would have held very well against Motorschützen and their fire support and the Wilk and the Salamandra. It's a bit much. Pushing Mistral up. HGM still in position to try and help. I got the other HGM coming up. And over on the left, I managed to get the Legionnaires into the building. MX-13 on attack move is trying to deal with anything that is opposing it, really. So the Snetchka, the Legionnaires take out the Snetchka. Legionnaires are also down to four man, so it's going to be difficult. Fagot down to one missile. The LSTR fighting off the Legionnaire will win. They will win. They still got a fire support vehicle, I do not. But I do have a plus two. He has to do something. He has to start buying a CV. He has to start getting back into the game. He has to start capping this. Otherwise, this is going to get pretty painful in the long run. There you go. He's taken out my guys. Uh, the Fulsham Eager, I'm trying to push them forward, but risky. So I decide against it. I'm not having enough fire support. So first get fire support, then push in. Here's the Motorschützen taking fire from the MX-10 or CSBs that I pushed forward. Um, I still want to take this forest out entirely. And in order to do that... Oh, I haven't called them in yet. I'm going to get a couple of Fulsham Jaegers in a minute or two. Now he has an Ondava in the back. It's a nice artillery unit. Of course, in hindsight, I could have taken that out just by driving something down the highway a bit earlier. But this T-72 and one Wilk, probably not going to be too entertained if I just drive a unit right to his base. Even if I do, uh, there's a Salamandra, there's a Recon Infantry. I'm not going to be able to get there. Now he's taken over the building. I have my full Jaeger, but I lost all fire support. Even the Fuch Milan is now dead. I'm just going to have to be a little patient. And that's fine, because I can afford to be patient. I don't have to do that much. Because I'm leading by 117 points, and my score is ticking up. So I'm in a pretty comfortable position. Full Jaeger trying to move forward. 
Uh, very little cover. But I do manage to take out the LSTR. I think that was the kill for the Fulshimjäger. I just don't have a way to kill the Wilk. Because I pulled the Tiger back as it was out of snap and hot twos, so it couldn't really assist me much. And that meant that the only unit that could potentially do something against the Wilk was uh, the duo of 1390s, which are going to take too long. There's 10 RCs coming up as well. There's the fire support. So ironically, I now have a lot of fire support, but no infantry to push with. Over on the right, not much going on. He is trying to push forward a couple of LSTR. And because the Legionnaires see them and engage them with the Mini-Me, I'm able to cut them off with the 2013. Again, a very nice kill to get before they become a danger. They're stunned, they're completely locked in place, and they're going to get wiped out very quickly. Over here, in the middle, there's really not much. There's still the Motorschützen. Uh, he has Fagot, he has Osa, AKM, and he has the Mortar. I could have just pushed in with the infantry. Again, the benefit of having perfect hindsight. He is now buying a CV to get to Charlie, so he can get a plus two. Or he can get to, he can reduce my plus two, but I already have another CV going to Golf. I am defending this area as best I can, so I'm pushing forward with some Legionnaires. Not really designing to push, just trying to get enough forces there to defend my CV. Motorschutz in here falling back a little. Over here, the Motorschutz in 90 have taken the building. He has quite a few points stored here. This is 20 points per infantry unit. There's an Osa. There's a Wilk for 90 points. There's fire support. There's HGMs. There's recon. It's a pretty self-contained battle group, but it's not really going anywhere. They're just kind of sitting there. At this point, HGM on F3 trying to deal damage against the surviving Wilk in the back. And there's a T72S. He invested another 125 points in another tank. Of course, that's a bit much for one HGM on F3 to take down. So at the moment, sadly, not a whole lot of work for the HGM. He seems to be randomly shelling the position here where he suspects the CV is. He's not wrong. It is kind of where the CV is. But for now, he is missing. In the future, I should probably put it on something like there or here, where it's a bit less obvious. Another Milan to the front line, to the highway, making sure that nothing gets through. And if these tanks are interested in trying to push, they're going to be running into the Milan. Now, I have the plus three ticking. He now puts his CV into Charlie, so now I only have a plus two. But it still means that the ball is squarely in his court. He's going to have to do something. Not me. I am pretty happy staying where I am, defending the positions that I have, reinforcing where I can, and just making sure that I take the whole forest here. There's still a few motorschutz in. I can't quite spot them because I don't have enough reconnaissance. Mistral moving into position, VAP 2013 able to engage any infantry that moves across the open. And I believe I have the Tiger back at base for resupply. Should be coming up pretty soon. Here, we are starting to engage the Wilk. I have Commando Para. I'm not really interested in pushing. I'm just trying to wait for him to make a mistake, and he does. Because the motor shoots him walk out of the building, and he instantly loses 11 of the guys. And that's about three quarters of the motor shoots in 90 dead. That means that the Wilk is just kind of sitting there. It has a recon unit, but only one guy alive. Can't do that much. And that's really kind of the point. He cannot do that much. As for the defense of Golf, I have a Pirate, I have a VBL Mistral for Antier, I got Mistral over there. I should also get another infantry into the screen here, in case they just walk right through the forest and get to the CV. In that case, the Mistral and Vab will die first, hopefully buying me enough time to get the CV out. Now, again, the 912 comes in, and the Legionnaires are trying to push on the Fagot without smoke. And because of that, uh, I'm taking fire from the Wilk and the T-72S. The infantry dies. The Fagot leave the building, though. But just look at how empty this is. Even the MX-10RCs can just drive up and kill whatever happens to be here. I need to probe more. <laughs> That's basically the conclusion of every game that I watch from myself. I need to probe more. I need to be a bit more aggressive like that. Cedar Craft narrowly avoiding a Mistral hit. And at this point, still plus two, 277 points in the lead. Now he's coming out with a couple more units. I'm not sure exactly what I was able to kill there, but I think it was a BMP. AMX-10RC takes a side shot from a tank and survives. 
And over here, the Amex 1390s are trying to deal with the Motorschutzen. Oh, sorry, no, with the Vidra, which have remarkably high amounts of armor, or the 1390s don't do that much, whichever happens first. They do fire heat rounds, which... Well, that's a blessing and a burden. It means they can damage the tank if they really want to. It also means that they don't do as much damage to the Vidra, for example, as an Amex 10 or C would at a shorter range. Anyway, um, we have only two minutes left in the replay, as you can see. Because I think that he was starting to realize he didn't really have anywhere to push. He is trying to get a couple of motorshoots in across, just motorshoots in base. HGM Milan F1 in a position to deal with the tanks. And if I can get a hit, that would be a flank shot. But it being a Milan, misses. Falsham Jaeger pushing forward. I was a bit concerned that he was going to get support from the tanks and or that we would see the MiG-29-912 again. Uh, there's also artillery landing in my position because he can still see my guys moving forward. Here come the tanks. I have my ASF out now, Mirage 2000C RDI. I'm patrolling the skies, essentially getting ready for his anti-infantry bird. Now I know the Falschemeager cannot survive, so I'm trying to pull them back. Arguably I should have smoked them up. But I also have another surprise waiting for them. Right here, the Tiger. The 29-913 comes in. He has no air defense. Nothing. This guy, however, has two longer range missiles. And I was mistaking this for the Napalm Bomber. It is not. He is killing the 2000C RDI. And while I do do some damage, it is not enough. Doesn't matter, because I can deal with these two tanks with the Tiger. I'm also trying to use the HGM Milan F3s on the flank. Mistral's getting killed. Now the Tiger comes into play. And now the Tiger is free to engage the tanks. Had I done this a few moments ago, I probably would have had the uh, infantry alive. There's one side shot on the tank. There is the second side shot on the tank. A bit of rocket pods to make sure it doesn't escape. And he's smoking it up. There goes the infantry. Nicely clearing these guys out. MI-17 comes forward. Kotal engages it. I still have a missile or two. I just need a visual on the T-72S. But at this point, he surrenders. And leaves the match. I lost more than I killed. That's clear. So if you're looking at KD, he played better than I did. But he was not really able to push anywhere. Or his pushes were not very efficient. They didn't really work. So that gave me the win. But again, at the same time, he surrendered. Um, it could have been anything. I've surrendered games because my baby was crying and I had to leave the PC and go tend to the baby. So when somebody surrenders at these points, I don't strictly take it as, hey, uh, you have won because you play better. It can also be something like, hey, uh, real life is calling. I'm going to be forced to tend to that first. Anyway, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you want to use the deck, it is down below in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon for more.